What's up YouTube, my name is Alec, this is Alec Makes Things, and in this video I am going to be doing a quick review of the absolutely spectacular and latest release of the Peugeot 9x8 24 hour Le Mans hybrid hypercar by Lego. I did a 20 minute detailed build and review of this car in another video, so if you wanted a more in-depth exploration of how to build this, and also my thoughts and insights on it, then go and check out that video, links in the description below. If you just want the highlights, then this is the video for you. So this is set number 42156, and it was released on the 1st of May, 2023. Now I was particularly excited to get this off the shelf and into my studio as soon as possible so that I could get the box open and build it. This set comes in at about 200 US dollars, 200 euros, that's about 170 British pounds, or between 217 and 300 Australian dollars. Made in collaboration with Peugeot, this is another set that's based on an actual real life car and I really do feel like they've done it justice. Also quickly just smash that like button if you've gotten anything out of this video I'd really appreciate it and so does the algorithm. This is fantastic looking, fun to build, it's a decent size and it will earn its place on any display shelf. Packaged in a sturdy and beautifully designed box with a lime green Technics themed border at the bottom, I think it looks absolutely awesome. So we've got all of the usual gubbins that we would expect on the box itself, including a really great picture of the car on the front of the box, sat in a sea of black, this looks like something between a supercar and a back car. On the rest of the box we've got information about the car, so such as its dimensions. We've also got information about the actual car in real life. So we've got engine stats, speed, acceleration, things like this. We've also got some comparative shots of the vehicle, uh, the real life vehicle that is, and the toy itself. We've also got an outline of the Le Mans track in France. So coming in at around 1,775 pieces and for 18 years and over, this car is gonna be a little bit more interesting and also a little bit more complicated to build than some of the cheaper and smaller sets. That being said, I don't think it was too difficult to build. There's a few challenges along the way, but I think if you are into this type of thing, you're gonna really enjoy building this car. In terms of highlights, functions, and features, this car most notably has suspension at the front and the rear. You can see this by lifting the hood mechanism at the front here, and this uses a heavy duty or larger shock absorber, and it uses only one at either end. I've heard some people complain about this, but I find that this works really well. I thought it was a very unique build, and it offers some really nice resistance when you're pushing it down. The rear does move a little bit further than the front, but they both move kind of independently on each side, and I'm really happy with this. So also we have the hand of God steering, very, very common on these cars. Always removable, but I would typically leave it in. I don't think it attracts anything from the overall look. And I think what makes this particularly cool is that the steering wheel in the cockpit is actually linked up to the front steering, and so we can actually steer the car using the steering wheel although in reality you'd probably never actually do that you'd always use the hand of god steering this offers a fair amount of resistance when the car is stationary but it is a lot easier to turn the steering when the car is moving now this vehicle also has differentials at the front and at the rear and you can see these once you remove the rear cover and also lift the front hood the front actually has a different type of differential to the rear this is the red geared more modern one which is a little bit more heavy duty the rear one however is connected to the engine and that means that when either of the back wheels are turned that will move the pistons in the fake engine and i really like this fake engine as well this has got some little yellow pistons that move up and down within a housing looks a little bit more realistic than some of the axles with bushes that we've seen in the cheaper models now the differentials really just act as a way but allowing the car's wheels to move independently from each other so that it can turn around corners without the wheels slipping. And it does it in a little bit more of an interesting mechanical way to some of the cheaper cars, which just have two separate axles that aren't connected to each other. So probably the most aesthetic component of this car in terms of its features is really the butterfly doors, which open and lead into the cockpit. I think these look great, really nice to build. They're very sturdy construction and I think they add a little bit of flair to the vehicle overall. Personally I would keep these closed on my display shelf because I really like this shape of the cockpit. Now talking about the cockpit this is actually apart from the steering wheel which as I mentioned does turn the front wheels and I was probably more impressed with that than I should be. This just has a single seat for the driver obviously it is a race car so there is no need for a passenger seat in this but there's also nothing really by way of dashboard and there's no kind of stickers on the inside or anything like that. Just quickly, if you're enjoying this content and you want to see more like this, then smash that subscribe button. 
Now, another really cool feature of this car is the glow-in-the-dark headlights at the front. And although they do glow in the dark, they don't glow in the dark an awful lot, certainly not as much as the box implies. They achieve that effect with a long exposure on the camera when taking that photo. That being said, I think these lights look awesome. Now there are 50 stickers in this set, there are thereabouts, and they do add some really nice detail to the vehicle, but you do have to pay attention both to where they go and also take your time when putting them on because there's no second chances. Once those stickers are down, there there's no way of getting them back up again without ruining the sticker. There's also no replacement stickers. But I think they really do add some nice detail. We've got uh, little Michelin Man stickers on the side. We've got Peugeot name and logo on the vehicle. And we've also got some of the kind of sponsors and information here. They definitely add some really nice detail to the vehicle. So on the downside, there is no gearbox in this vehicle. This is a massive problem for me. Me, but I know that some people have complained about this or that at least they aren't happy about it. Personally, although it would be nice to have a gearbox in terms of building it and kind of seeing the mechanism and how it works, ultimately this is a display piece and unless you're going to motorize this vehicle and turn it into an RC car, you're probably never really going to need the gearbox anyway. I think once you have built it and it's on your shelf, it's going to look fantastic regardless of whether it's got a good gearbox or not. The instruction manual that comes with this car is a little bit more detailed and in-depth than some of the cheaper models, so it gives you some information about the designer of this particular set. It comes with quite a few comparative shots of the real car and the toy car as well, and obviously it's got the parts list in the back. Overall, it's fairly easy to follow, and they've got all the typical stuff in there that you'd expect, like the scale images of some of the components so that you know which type of axle or beam you're using during the construction process. I didn't find it really that difficult to follow. There's a couple of bits where it wasn't entirely clear as to what clips into where, but if you are having any trouble with it, you can also check out my in-depth build and review where I cover pretty much every stage of the build process. There were a couple of interesting pieces also that I noticed during the build of this. So one was an L-shaped beam which had pinholes on uh, two of its planes and that was something I hadn't seen before whether or not that is the first time they've been used I really couldn't say certainly something that I've since bought for my own creations and the other one is quite a thin and long rectangular beam that again has pinholes on essentially the two main sides of the beam itself again I think the way that they connect to the car and the way bits connect to them was also particularly interesting and I cover this in a little bit more detail in the longer video now personally I absolutely love the grey matte finish on this vehicle I think it looks awesome coupled with these black components it just looks really 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 good you've also got these really nice bright colours punctuating it here and there so we've got the lime green on the front on the top of the roof the inside of cockpit we've also got these red pieces on the back of the car as well which again just add extra little bit of flair to the overall vehicle the end result is just a really beautiful functional looking set with some nice mechanics and features now, as you might have guessed i really enjoyed building this and i actually really love this car and if you are interested in getting this type of car i would definitely recommend it if you've only worked on the smaller ones previously i would also say this is very accessible and if it's something that you're thinking of doing and you can afford it I would say go for it this is a really really nice piece and at the end of the day it's going to look absolutely fantastic sat on your shelf thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have hit the like button and if you want to see more content like this in the future then smash that subscribe button if you've got any questions then leave them in the comment section below otherwise we'll see you next time